Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be part two of the Ritual Beast combo tutorials that I'm doing with the new capabilities available to the deck with Ritual Beast Ulti Key Moon Falcos. Now, like I said in the previous video, we have no idea when we're going to be getting this card as of 2018, but we should be getting it sometime this year. Hopefully that's before national season, the card will be imported in one of our core sets as an OCG import from the Link Brains pack, because we in the TCG are not getting the Link Brains pack. So, what I'm going to be showing you in this video is I'm going to be showing four different combos at least, so hopefully I can do this rather quickly, of just all of the win Gold Sark variations of combos, because in the past, win Gold Sark wasn't that valuable in terms of what we had access to here in the TCG. After Gold Sark went to three, it was still, you know, a very solid card to play to be, you know, a combo extender plus starter with win because win Gold Sark is another two card combo, much like Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampangu. But because we only have one Ulti Conahawk here in the TCG, the combos were very lackluster in terms of what their ending capability was as compared to something in the OCG where they have three Ulti Conahawks. But because I've got so many combos to go through and so many variations to show you and explain, I'm not going to waste too much time in this portion of the video and let's just jump straight into the meat of the matter. Alright, so because it doesn't take that much time, because there's not a lot of steps involved, I'm going to show you the original win Gold Sark combo that we have access to right now before the Link Monster comes out, so that I can explain to you why that it's very subpar, and why it's not really something that's a huge thing to focus on until we get the Link Monster. Now, this is my center field marker, I'm going to move it over here so that I have a little bit more space to work with, since I'm doing a bunch of stuff with Banished and Graveyards and stuff, but win Gold Sark before the Link Monster, it goes Gold Sark for Conahawk, and then you normal summon your win and use win to special Conahawk. You'd use Conahawk to get Rampangu out of your deck. And then you would fusion up with your win and your Conahawk into ulti Conahawk. You would use Conahawk's effect targeting win and uh, Conahawk from your banished zone. And then you would chain its defuse effect targeting win and Rampangu. Those would get summoned. Conahawk would go to the graveyard. You'd get your search for steeds. Now from here, Rampangu's effect would trigger, and you would basically, typically always go for Gaia Paleo. Uh, it really depends on what you're trying to do, uh, but going for Gaia Paleo to send either, at this point, Winda or just any other Tamer to Grave is really just sort of how this functioned. There's not really any better way to do this until you start implementing the Link Monster. Now from here, you'd Link, uh, not Link, you'd fuse back up into Ulti Conahawk, and then you'd use Ulti Conahawk's effect, putting two of your banished monsters into the graveyard to get a search for ambush and then you would set them. Now, why this is particularly not good for us in the TCG is because look at what happened over here. We only have one copy of a tamer or beast banished. No matter how you do this combo differently, you need an extra card resource to be committed into the combo or else you're going to be sitting here with Ulti Conahawk on your field alone, unable to tag out and then you're going to run the risk of this going away because you're not going to be able to tag it out on your opponent's turn to protect it and preserve it in your extra deck. Ambush is live, which I guess is good, but ultimately, like, there's there's not really a lot of protection you have for this, and in the OCG, this is a fine play to do because they have three ulti Conahawks, but in the TCG, we have one of this card. We need to protect it. So let me back this up and show you what the new capability of the combo is for win plus gold sark, just as a two-card combo with the Link Monster added into the mixture. Alright, so once again, Win plus Gold Sark, only this time we're going to be using Ulti Kimun Falcos in the combo sequence as it is a new card being able to be used in the combos, and let's see how this ends. And it's a much better result than what we had access to before. But you're going to start the combo the exact same way. You're going to activate Gold Sark, Gold Sarking for Conahawk, and then you're going to Normal Summon Win using Win to special the Conahawk from your Banished Zone. Conahawk then is going to use its effect and you're going to banish a copy of Rampangu and then you're going to fuse up into your ulti Conahawk. Now you may be wondering why I'm putting cards diagonally, or not diagonally, horizontally. If the Ritual Beast has been summoned already for the turn, I always put it horizontally. That's how I always play this deck. Uh, it's so that I have something showing me that I've special summoned it for the turn and it is me tracking a mandatory like game state and that's perfectly legal for you to do in an event. As long as you make sure your banish and your graveyards are in completely different places so they can't be like mixed together no judge is going to have a problem with you tracking a mandatory game state by simply turning the card sideways but anyway so you're going to use ulti conahawk's effect targeting these two again to get your search effect then you're going to chain the defuse to summon win and your rampangu sending conahawk to grave 
And now from here, you're going to add Laura to your hand. We're going to do the same sort of thing we did in the Elder Conahawk combos of searching a monster and committing that into our play. Now, we're only going to get one trap search this turn, but that's still infinitely better of an ending board than what we had access to with just, you know, the play without the Link monster because it leaves our ulti Conahawk not vulnerable and it leaves us with more monsters on board. But so from here, you're going to use Rampangu's effect and you're going to banish an ulti Apaleo, sending regular Apaleo from your deck to the graveyard. This needs to be sideways. Uh, and then you're going to link up with the Win and the uh, Rampangu into your ulti Kimun Falcos. Now from here, we have the Apaleo engrave. We have a bunch of names engraved that we want to start getting back into our banish circulation pool. So you'll use ulti Kimun Falcos and you'll banish basically just any name. It doesn't matter uh, what you banish to get your normal summon of Laura. And then you'll use Laura's effect to special summon a Paleo from your graveyard. Then a Paleo's effect is going to banish yet another name from your graveyard. So you get a lot of you know resources back into your banish zone, which doesn't really matter for the combo potential of this turn, but it does matter for the searches you're going to be getting. But so from here, this is really the last fusion play we're able to make for the turn. You're going to uh, fuse up into Ulti Conahawk using the Laura and the Apaleo. And the only card that uh, hasn't been summoned this turn is the Laura, so you can't tag out again. So you're going to use Ulti Conahawk's effect, you're going to send the Apaleo that's here, and you're going to send uh, just any monster. You don't want to put Apaleo back into your graveyard, that's the only one you really want to keep. So really Apaleo Laura is what you want to keep to tag out into on your opponent's turn. So I usually send like Ulti Apaleo and win, it's, it's just personal preference. Uh, but those those go to the grave and you can search for either steeds or if you already had a steeds in your hand You could search for ambush uh, But basically as a pure two card combo. This isn't too bad for you It's not nearly as bad off as you were with the original win gold Sark combo Because what you do is you end your turn by just setting the steeds if that's the only card you were able to have access to And then during your opponent's draw phase you tag out the ulti conahawk because you have three monsters out here This is actually just like the perfect number for you You tag out into Laura and Apaleo in the two Kimun Falcos zones so they get boosted, specifically for Laura's uh, effect, uh, for Laura's stats, because Laura will be really big. Uh, and then you'll use uh, Apaleo's effect to just banish another uh, Tamer from your graveyard. So you'll banish the Win, and so now you have Conahawk or Rampangu plus Win banish, depending on what you put back into your grave. Doesn't really matter either way. Uh, Conahawk is better to tag your ulti uh, Kimun Falcos out into at your opponent's end phase, but I can understand why you would leave it in grave and go for something like Rampangu instead. But regardless, what you end up with is you end up with, you only were able to search one trap, which is Steeds. You don't have Ambush, which is kind of unfortunate because you don't have that safety net that Ambush provides you. Uh, but you do still have Steeds for three. The Apaleo has already used its effect, so everything is getting boosted by 500, so this is at 23. Laura has 2,500 defense off the Apaleo, but it's also getting an additional 600 boost from this, so it's actually got 3,100 defense. Apaleo has 800 defense off of this, and then the additional 500, so it's got 1,300, so it's the smallest thing on the field, easiest thing to kill. Uh, but you've got the Steeds, so you can Steeds for up to 4, uh, because you could Steeds for 3 with your board as is, and then you could tag this out to summon these two in Steeds for uh, Steeds for 4 if need be. You can Steeds for 3, or then go to 4. Now, the thing is that you don't have Ambush, so that is a little bit of, you know, a bummer. Like I said, it's a safety net. Ambush is a safety net card. No matter what happens to your field, if you get Rageki, Darkhold, or whatever, Ambush is a very good follow-up. Even in the face of evenly matched, um, a, uh, an Ambush is a very good follow-up card because you're able to keep Ambush on your field and then just flip it in the end phase. Your opponent would have to, like, use backer removal on it to bait it and then have to dedicate monsters to dealing with your monsters on board because they evenly matched you. They already used their battle phase. They're not attacking over anything. Uh, now, in the case of getting evenly matched on this board, you could easily just steeds these two monsters so they end up in the graveyard and leave ulti human Falcos, which you could then tag out for. Uh, but ultimately, this board is very weak to board wipes like Regeki and Darkhold, but it is a better form of the win-gold Sark combo than what we had previous access to, specifically because it puts this guy back into your extra deck to preserve him and not waste him and not have him potentially get killed and be, you know, something you're not able to use for the rest of the game because that was a big problem with the original win-gold Sark combo. But so now what I'm going to start showing you is some expanded forms of this combo because there's a lot of things that you can expand upon this combo with as far as a third card that give you interesting play lines and allow you to get searches for Steed's Ambush and do different things like that. So 
let's just start showing you those. All right, so now when building your deck, I feel like it's pretty valuable to at least play two wins and play two to three gold sark if you're trying to play any sort of modern ritual beast deck because it makes your ratios that much better for opening cards. Gold Sark is an extender on any of your other combo pieces like Elder Conahawk or Elder Rampangu combos. It's just an extra name at the end of the day. Win can be a bit bricky, but Win Gold Sark is actually a very expandable combo once we get the Link monster. Elder Conahawk and Elder Rampangu are very expandable as well, but I do not think they are as expandable with a third card as the Win Gold Sark combos are. The Win Gold Sark combos are expandable with a third card to allow you to get a Steeds Ambush Search and end in a good situation by having either Laura, by having either another Gold Sark, by having Elder, by having another Win, by having Zephyr and Pilica, or by having Oracle Zephyr or Terraforming to get Oracle Zephyr that gets Pilica. So there are so many cards. There are like infinite cards in your deck depending on how it was built that being just a third card paired with Win Gold Sark allows you to yield yourself a full searched turn for Steed's Ambush, end with the Link Monster, end with two other Ritual Beasts, and be very well off. Use three cards to generate five, and you're in a very good position. So, I'm not going to show you the ones with Laura or Zephyr and Pilica or Oracle or Terraforming, because those should be pretty obvious. I mean, you searched Laura in the combo I just showed you, so obviously if you opened any of these cards alongside it, you would just search Steeds or Ambush instead of the Laura, because you already had the card in your hand to perform the combo. So that's self-exclamatory. What I will do is I'll show you the three individual combos that follow up with these cards, because these cards all introduce something different into how you perform the win Gold Sark combo. So the show you the first one I'm gonna show you of that is just win Gold Sark Gold Sark. Gold Sark Gold Sark is Gold Sark is a card that people keep telling me is a brick in this deck, but actually, like with the Link Monster, and even before the Link Monster, it's actually just not a brick. It's actually just like a combo extender. Like it's it's another name. It's basically Rota. So, like, I don't understand why you wouldn't be playing at least two of this card, uh, depending on how your deck is built. Now, if you're playing more field spell heavy and more graveyard reliant, then I could see that, but Gold Sark is one of my favorite cards in this deck. But anyway, Gold Sark. You're going to start your turn with Gold Sark. If you have win Gold Sark, Gold Sark, and you're going to Gold Sark for the Conahawk. You're going to do very much the exact same sort of play structuring that we did previously. So you're going to summon win, special Conahawk, use Conahawk to banish Rampangu. Fuse up with these into Ulti Conahawk. Use Ulti Conahawk, target these two for the search effect, chain the defuse effect to summon Rampangu and win, and then your Conahawk goes to grave. You're gonna get your search. You're gonna get your search for Laura in this instance. Because we're gonna do the combo virtually identically. But the thing is, this Gold Sark allows us to get an additional search at the end of the combo sequence and then allows our combo to also be less vulnerable to board wipes just completely ruining your day on your opponent's turn but so from here you're going to use the rampangu's effect again and you're going to banish ulti apaleo to send regular apaleo from your deck to the grave you're going to link up with the rampangu and the win into your ulti kimun falcos and then your ulti kimun falcos is going to banish your rampangu to summon your Laura, and then your Laura is going to special your Apaleo back from Grave, and then your Apaleo is going to banish your Win or your Conahawk. I actually prefer to leave Conahawk in Grave for this one because you leave it in Grave to be a prime target for Ambush because you will have a live Ambush. You're going to end this in much the same way as the Elder Conahawk and Elder Rampangu plays end with six names in circulation, and two of them will be banished, two will be in Grave, and two will be on board. So it's very good for you. But so from here. You will fuse up with the Apaleo and the Laura into Ulti Conahawk. And now from here, you're going to activate this second Gold Sark. I prefer to wait until, you know, later in the turn to play the second Gold Sark. Because if you do mess up, the second Gold Sark will be your safety net to put the right card banish. But if you play it right, then you'll Gold Sark here and you'll Gold Sark for another... Basically what we've got is we've got access into one, two, three, four, five names. If you Gold Sark for Winda, that is a sixth name. And of these names, three of them are beasts and two of them are tamers. Winda counts as both, but essentially in this situation, it will be your third tamer. So now you're on one of those even number sequences that I talked about in a previous video, where you want to be at even numbers, tamers to beasts, because that's how this deck operates to its fullest capacity on its turn structures. But so you'll Gold Sark for a Winda. You'll use Conahawk's effect. You'll target, uh, you'll target uh, the Apaleo that is banished up here. And then you'll target Laura because it hasn't been special summoned yet for the search effect. 
then you will chain the defuse effect for Laura and for Winda. This will go to your grave and you will get a search for Steeds. And then from here, you will fuse these up again into Ulti Conahawk. And then from here, you've got five here. So the only thing you need to worry about is to make sure you leave a Paleo and Winda banished. Uh, and then the other two cards that you put back to grave it doesn't really matter. Uh, but so you'll use Ulti Conahawk's effect and you will put back just any two. Um, I usually put back Rampangu and Win. It doesn't matter. One of them is going back into your banish zone at the start of the next turn anyway. And you will search for your ambush. So what you've ended up with is you've ended up with a very strong situation of turning that Gold Sark into an additional search, essentially. The Gold Sark literally became Rota for one of your traps because it gave you the extra name you needed to get this combo going. But so then, of course, you'll set these. At the start of your opponent's turn, you'll tag this out immediately into your Apaleo and your Winda, and then your Apaleo will use its effect and you'll banish the Rampangu. So, what does this do for you overall? Let's review. Class, let us review. Pop quiz, let's review. Study hall, let's go. You end up with Winda on the board, meaning that if you get Raigeki, Darkhold, Kaiju Slumbered, whatever, this floats into a monster. Something like an ulti Petalfin that can tag out for these from your banished zone, so your board is strong to board wipes. You have a live ambush with two ritual beasts in your grave, a tamer and a, uh, and a beast. And then you've got steeds that you can steeds for three, you can steeds for five if you burn the ambush early, or you can steeds for four because ulti Kimun Falcos can also tag out into these two cards. So this is like a very perfect, like buildable board state to be in because you've got a floater on your field, you've got a tag out on your field, you've got ambush on your field, and you've got a steeds. So like, this is a wonderful thing for you to be uh, doing. Now, let me rewind this, and I'm gonna show you another variation of Win Gold Sark, and that is going to be Win win gold sark because that actually comes up all right so like i said this one is going to be showing you what you do with win win gold sark if you've built your deck to you know focus a little bit on this interaction of having win gold sark being a good opening play or at least a semi-decent opening play you probably have multiple wins in your deck and if you open a multiple of win you might think that that's a brick you might think that that is something that's you know just taking the quality of your hand down a peg or two and then it's going to be something you're going to be stuck with until the following turn, and then you'll have to use it then. But no, you can actually turn this into another trap card. You just follow the same basic principles of what we're doing with Laura, but you tweak them just a little bit. So, win-win Gold Sark. You're going to use Gold Sark to banish the Conahawk, and then you're going to normal summon your first win, and that will special summon Conahawk. You'll use Conahawk to banish Rampangu from your deck. Then you will fuse up with these two into your ulti Conahawk yet again. We're summoning this card a lot. You'll use its effect to target these two to send to your graveyard, and then you'll chain the defusion effect to summon the Win and the Rampangu. The Conahawk goes to your grave, and you are going to add Steeds to your hand. We're not going to add Laura. Why? Because we're going to be using the second Laura, or the second Win, as if it is a Laura. You'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. It's a little bit worse resource-wise, and it's a little bit strange in terms of the ending board, and you'll see what I mean when I get to that point. I'll definitely go over that, but you'll see. We'll just get to that point and you'll see. But so, Rampangu's effect, you'll banish Ulti Apaleo, and you will send Apaleo from your deck to grave. And then from here, you will link up with these two, and you will link into the Ulti Kimun Falcos. Now, you're going to use Ulti Kimun Falcos' effect, but now instead of banishing one of your guys you've already used, because we're trying to trigger this win to summon someone, you're going to banish the Apaleo that you just put in your grave. So you're going to banish Apaleo to get your normal summon for win, and then win's effect will trigger, specialing the Apaleo that you just banished off Ulti Kimun Falcos. So that's that's how that one works. So then from here, you use Apaleo just to get another free banish. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you banish because it's not going to affect your overall endgame. Uh, and then you're going to just you're going to fuse up with these, and they've already both been uh, special for the turn. The Apaleo was special just then, and the win was special earlier off the original win. And you're going to summon Ulti Conahawk, and then you are going to use its effect to send two cards from your banished pile back to your grave, and you're going to search for Ambush. Now from here, you can set those two cards during your opponent's uh, draw phase. You tag out the Ulti Conahawk into your win and your Paleo, and then you can use a Paleo to banish a card, right? All right, class, pop quiz. What is the problem here, right? What's the problem that we have in this situation? It's a very strong play. It's a very good play. It's very decent in terms of, instead of having that win stuck in our hand, we turned that into a trap card. But what's the issue here? What's the issue that you see? The glaring issue. I'll tell you. 
It's that we have one, two, three beasts, and we only have one tamer name in circulation. So, the ambush is not live this turn, because you've already used uh, Wind's special summon effect for the turn. So, even though there's two monsters here, Wind's already been special summoned, and there's no tamer that you can summon. So, this ambush isn't live. There's only one monster banished here. So even if there was another win banished here, it's already been summoned for the turn anyway. But even with it not being there, there's just one monster here. So this can't tag out. So basically, you're riding on steeds a lot. Now, if this survives until your next turn with your, you know, with whatever other traps you might have, whatever other cards that you had that you committed into the play, all that sort of stuff, uh, those are all factors, obviously. Uh, but depending on what you had access to, uh, you're really banking on this Steeds getting you to your next turn. Now, sometimes it'd be like that. Sometimes you get to your next turn just because Steeds hitting three cards is super powerful. Uh, but otherwise, this is very weak to board wipes. It's very weak to evenly matched. The biggest, like, thing that I can say about this is that at least the Ambush is live during the start of your next turn. But that's really bad compared to using it on the end of your opponent's turn. But, I mean, it is still a recovery option. So, I mean, I guess that is still, you know, a silver lining. If you get, like, evenly matched or whatever. If you get evenly matched, you would just steeds away all three of your monsters. Um, so that you're not banishing them face down. You'd banish your steeds face down and then you'd ambush at the start of your turn and then try to make plays happen. It's very lackluster. But it is still decent enough to warrant knowing how this works. And if you had any other quality extender or whatever, or if you have other good trap cards or maybe floodgates even, this still works very well for you in your favor because you committed three cards, got a plus two out of it, and of those cards, one is still a very good recovery option and play enabler, and the other one is just a one of the best disruptive cards we've had in the game's history. So that's that one. You can definitely keep the win in your hand and just do regular win gold sark. But, honestly, you'd probably be better off doing something along these lines because you have more access into a little bit of a better play, I think, by some, starting your turn with Ambush uh, and then getting searches and doing stuff like that and then committing your normal summon. That's just my personal preference. But, on to the last combo I'm going to show you, which is Elder Wind Con uh, Gold Sark. That one. I almost said Elder Wind Conahawk, and that one would have made almost no sense. Elder Wind Gold Sark. <laughs> I'm showing you a lot of combos in this video, and it's very hard to speak quickly, but I'm trying my best. All right, so this is the last combo I'm going to show you for this video. This one is Elder Win Gold Sark, and it's a little bit interesting. That's why I'm showing it to you, because some people that I see play this deck, I've been shadowing a lot of games on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro and Dueling Book and stuff like that, and I've, I've seen people try to play this deck, and they don't do it very well. It's, it's a very intricate deck. It's, it's definitely to no fault of their own. They may not have put the infinite amount of time into this deck, like... Like some other people have, but basically, Elder Win Gold Sark. You'll use Gold Sark to banish your Conahawk. I hope you've noticed a pattern by this point, because if you haven't, then boy howdy, do we have some things to talk about. But so you can either summon Elder here, or you can wait and hold it for later. But regardless, you're going to summon Elder and summon Win, and then use Win's effect to summon the Conahawk. Use Conahawk's effect to banish the Rampangu. Then you're going to fuse up with these two into the Ulti Conahawk. Yet again, the old friend, the old man. You'll use Ulti Conahawk's effect, target these two, chain the defuse effect to special win and Rampangu. This will go to your grave. And now you're going to get a search. But because you already have another tamer on your field because of Elder, you're not going to get a search for Laura or anything like that. You're going to just raw dog search the Apaleo. Because Apaleo being able to be normal summoned and being able to use its effect to banish twice... Uh, is a huge factor for this combo and that allows you to uh, do some cool shit. But so you'll use Rampangu's effect, and now because we have the Apaleo in hand, what we're going to do is we're going to banish an ulti guy Apaleo, and that is going to send a Winda from our deck to the grave. So we've got access to three beasts and three tamers at this point, because you've got one, two, three, one, two, three. So you, you've entered one of those magical number situations of where you get a lot of combo potential and a lot of follow-up for, uh, for what you've invested into the combo sequence. But... So from here, you're going to link away with the uh, with the Rampangu and the Win or the Elder. It doesn't particularly matter, although leaving the Elder because it hasn't be, been specialed yet is better for like your play string. So you're going to summon this. You're going to use its effect, and you're going to banish one of your cards. You're going to banish probably just the Winda. You've, if you don't banish it off this, you can banish it off the Apaleo, so it doesn't really matter. But so you're going to get your normal summon for Apaleo. Now, this is what I was talking about. It doesn't matter if you start the play with Elder or not. Because 
if you held the Elder and just started with uh, Win Gold Sark, you could normal summon Elder here off this and then gain an additional normal to summon a Paleo. So you'd end up at this p point in the combo regardless of whether you summoned Elder first or if you summoned Elder right here. So it, it basically it gives a little bit of variability into what you could do, but it ultimately doesn't matter in the end. But anyway, you'll use a Paleo's effect just to banish one of these bastards. Uh, you'll banish the Rampangu. This window has not been specialed yet, so it needs to be vertical. And this Apaleo and this Elder have not been specialed yet. And so though that's pretty important. That's actually pretty real for this combo sequence. So you're going to fuse up with these two cards into your Ulti Conahawk. Then you're going to use Ulti Conahawk. You're going to target Apaleo and then target the guy Apaleo that is over here. Then you're going to chain the defusion effect to summon the Apaleo and summon the Winda or the Elder. It doesn't really matter. The guy Apaleo goes to grave and then you're going to search for your steeds or your ambush. Now from here you'll use the Apaleo's effect and let's see what we got here. We got these so we'll banish the Conahawk. It's already been specialed so it doesn't really matter. At this point Gold Star could be a really good extender because this is one of those times when having an odd number of Ritual Beasts names that are banished uh, or in circulation in general would be really beneficial to you because you have just one monster that hasn't been uh, specialed yet. And if you had Gold Sark here, you could Gold Sark for a seventh name, like for Petalfin or for uh, or for whatever. And that would work out to your favor. This is one of the very few combos where that comes up, though. But so you banished off a of Paleo, and then you are going to fusion up with these again into Ulti Conahawk. And then you're going to use Ulti Conahawk's effect to just send any two of them from your banished pile back to your graveyard. It uh, doesn't really matter which ones you do. Uh, so Conahawk Elder is probably the best ones to do uh, because you want Conahawk in your grave for ambush, obviously. Conahawk is best summoned off ambush at the end of your opponent's turn. But so you get searches for Steed's ambush, and then you get to end your turn right here. So when you end your turn, these are all loaded to be specialed again. These are set during your opponent's draw phase. As per usual, you're going to tag out the ulti Conahawk, and you're going to summon a Paleo and Winda. And then you're going to use a Paleo's effect immediately to banish one of your Tamers to accompany this Rampangu. So now you've ended up in a very, very good position yet again. You've ended up at one of the same positions that we've been seeing throughout this entire video and that you should be seeing throughout your entirety of time playing Ritual Beasts. You should be seeing almost the exact same turn one every time because this deck is very consistent at getting, no matter what its pieces are, getting to the same sort of ending board turn one or at least boards that resemble themselves. They're boards that aren't very powerful in their own right, but they have infinite potential on your turn two of the game because you just start searching, fusing up, linking up, doing all this sort of stuff. When you start your turn with like five monsters on field because you in phase ambushed and you've got Conahawk, Rampangu, Apelio, all these cards, you have so much capability for your turn two. This deck is very much a once you get to turn two and you have a least a reasonable amount of resources that you got from turn one, the sky is the limit with your play string. But, so, let's review. Let's look at what we got here. We've got Window on the board, so it, your your board is strong against board wipes. If you get Rageki, Darkhold, Kaiju Slumbered, this will trigger summoning a fusion from your extra deck, which can immediately tag out into these two, so you can still at least Steeds for two. You've got the Steeds, but you could Steeds for either, you know, one, two, three, four, or five, depending on when you want to burn the ambush to get, you know, numbers on board. Uh, and then you, uh, you just, you, you're in a very good position. There's nothing else to say about it. You've got three beasts and three tamers essentially in accessibility pool two of them are in your graveyard which are prime candidates for ambush you've got more ritual beast cards going to graveyard for paleo to possibly fuel on next turn uh you've got the rampangu and the wind that can come back by you know tagging this out you've got so much potential for your next turn and you've got so much stopping power with steeds because you get steeds for anywhere between one to five monsters that it's just it's very you know invaluable for you to know these combos so I hope that that was quick enough for this video not to be like ignorantly half an hour long, but it probably will still be anyway. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this sort of thing or not. Let me know if it was informative to you. Let me know if it helped you out a lot, all that sort of stuff. I'd love to know. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links as always are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support my content and my ability to make it, then Patreon is the best way to do so. But other than that, <laughs> as I've already said, thanks for watching. If you want me to do some more Ritual Beast videos, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video. Have an awesome day.
So now the video is over, as usual, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, way more than I could ever express. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.